What's good everybody, we're back again with one of my favorite political figures in the world. We got Jesse Ventura and the name of this video is J uh, Jesse Ventura calls JD Vance's criticism of Walt's military record despicable. Okay, so this is on CNN, 1.3 million views in three days. This is again, one of the first times I've heard Jesse Ventura talk about the new presidential race, the new presidential election, of course, between uh, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. So it should be extremely interesting. Drop a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. I love you all. Welcome back to County Gaines News Media. And let's get it, guys. Come on. Dad, and some of you know I'm in here. You, a chain smoking Korean War era veteran, um, cared about his community, but two days after I turned 17, he took me down to join the Army National Guard. And for 24 years, I proudly wore that uniform. Pretty impressive, guys. I'm still pretty impressed with that. Now, I know a lot of people on Twitter and YouTube are mocking him. Sean Ryan, notably, is mocking him, saying he never served, never saw military combat. And that's fair enough. He didn't ever see military combat, so fair enough. Presumptive Democratic vice presidential candidate Tim Walls, the governor of Minnesota, touting his service, the National Guard, at a campaign rally tonight in Arizona. It comes as Republican VP candidate Senator J.D. Vance criticizes Walz's record, accusing him of abandoning his National Guard unit in 2005 to run for Congress before a deployment to Iraq. Hey. Well, joining me now, former independent governor of Minnesota, Let's Jesse go. Ventura. He endorsed Walls in his recent run for governor. Hey. Governor Ventura, thank you so much for joining me this evening. I'm really eager to hear your take on this because you are a former, former Navy SEAL. You served in Vietnam. And I have to ask you what you think of this attack from the Trump ban's ticket on Governor Walsh's military service. Well, Laura, I'll tell you what I think. I think it's shameful. I think it's shameful that a veteran would attack another veteran. Mm. Uh, Governor Walsh served honorably for 24 years in the National Guard. After he was like a photographer, I think. You know, that was his MOS. For those wondering what your MOS is, it's kind of just like your military job. Or your military job, right? Like the Hodge twins. A lot of people think that they saw combat. They did not. <laughs> um, I think, you know, Kevin was a cook and then Keith was a truck driver. So, like, although they're in the Marines, very honorable, of course, amazing. You know, all respect to all the military people. They don't ever see combat, but it's a bit unfair to say that they didn't see any combat, so they don't, so they don't, do, they don't deserve respect, type of thing. You know, it's a bit unfair to say that, in my opinion. Twenty years, you are eligible to retire at any time you deem necessary. They talk about him missing his deployment. Well, maybe Mr. Vance should ask the real question: What is the National Guard doing deploying to a foreign country in a foreign war? True. Well, let's go into history and figure out how that happened. True. That happened because George W. Bush and Dick Cheney went into the Iraq War based on lies, no weapons of mass destruction, True. no ties to Al Qaeda, nothing True. with 9/11, and they ran out of bodies. They needed more bodies. They couldn't implement a draft. That would be political political suicide. So what George Bush did was sign an executive order sending the National Guard into foreign deployment. The National Guard is not for foreign deployment. Their name says what they do. They guard our nation from within. So this hogwash about Governor Waltz missing a deployment, not only that, he's 24 years, he's an E-9. I deployed twice. We never even had an E-9 with us when we deployed. <laughs> E-9s are not going to walk the point. They're not going to be involved in any combat whatsoever. They're figureheads being the most senior enlisted within their company, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, I, I googled in the last video, an E-9 is the highest grade you can get in the National Guard or any military service. Um, that's a enlisted, which is basically, I think it's like a, ser a sergeant colonel, something really high up, because like, that's a flipping really high up position, you know, uh, staff sergeant, something like that. That's, really, that's like the highest you can get, you know. He wouldn't be serving on the front lines, guys. That's just not how they operate, you know, the military operates. So I think that uh, Vance is doing a disservice to himself and a disservice to the United States Marine Corps. I know a lot of great Marines and Marines show respect mm. and Vance is not showing respect. And let's talk, let's continue. Who does he have respect for? Donald Trump. 
the biggest draft dodger from the Vietnam War, the rich white boy who Damn. bought his way out of it. I come from South Minneapolis. My friends and I didn't get out of it. We either got drafted or we enlisted. I know six or seven or eight of my friends. Donald Trump was your typical rich white boy who didn't have to serve in Vietnam because he could buy his way out of it. And that's who Vance is standing with, this guy who leads from the rear. <laughs> oh my God, bro, that's insane. Bro, he called him a rich white boy. That is hilarious. The way he called him a white boy was hilarious. <laughs> I love it. Bro, I love Jesse Ventura, man. Like I said, guys, uh, definitely we'd be picking Donald Trump over Kamala Harris. But at the same time, a lot of things about Trump takes money from the countries. Um, you know, he, he was draft dodging. Like, just a lot of things, guys, that he just is not, you know. But his leadership is more spiritual than anything, you know, Donald Trump's. It's more of a spiritual and a social thing rather than more of a, you know, actual political movement. You know what I'm saying? The whole MAGA, that whole thing is more spiritual, right? Then why do you think, given all that you've described from the politics, the history, and of course the person who's on the top of the ticket who has been criticized for the bone spurs reason for not going to serve. And I, frankly, I have not served. I am a civilian and have the ultimate reverence for those who have and thank you for our, your service. So why do you think this is the line of attack to choose politically? Obviously it would offend and alienate voters on one level and also people who have served the armed forces on the other. Yeah, it's a good question, guys. It's a good question, you know. He's kind of alienating people that weren't didn't serve in the military, so. I don't know. You'd have to ask Mr. Vance that. I don't understand his motive whatsoever, how he could turn against a fellow veteran. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's kind of an unwritten rule amongst us veterans. You don't criticize another veteran. Not every veteran's a knuckle dragger. And I'm not going to define knuckle dragger because if you've been in the service, you'll know what a knuckle dragger is. But, you know, as a frogman in the United States Navy, my job was to ensure the Marines could get to shore to do their job. We went in ahead of them. We went in before them to ensure the Marines could land. And he, he so yeah, he's basically describing a knuckle dragger is basically like, like a grunt, guys, a guy that's like fighting, doing the, doing the fighting, doing the actual damn work. Okay, and most people in the military aren't gonna be that guys, you know, just because you serve in the military doesn't mean you saw combat, doesn't mean you fought overseas, okay? There's a lot of things that just don't exactly add up, okay? Bit unfair. His point of being a Marine like he is and then criticizing the governor after 24 years of service, it's despicable on yeah, his behalf for doing that. And I hope all veterans feel like I do about it. You don't criticize another veteran and how they served, whether they're a cook or whatever they do, they all have a job to do. Yeah. And if you're going to be successful, everybody has to do their job and pitch in to be successful. I agree, guys. It's a team. The military is a team. Like a sports team okay i love bodybuilding all this type of thing but it's individual you know what i'm saying like, i never played any team sports but i understand the camaraderie male camaraderie and the love uh, and the brotherhood i understand this because i have a brother like i have really close friends i love the whole masculine ideas and at the same time guys when you're dissing a guy when you're making fun of a guy who just served as a cook or a photographer or whatever just because they weren't a flipping you know seal team six member a delta force member a member a green beret member like just because they didn't serve and, and go and kill bin laden doesn't mean that they're any less of a soldier than you okay that's unfor it's unfortunately uh, how it is nowadays guys now it's like levels so i served i served in seal team six and i <laughs> and i took out osama bin laden all right you're seemed better than the guy who's like on the front lines or just a regular navy seal you know it's kind of unfair guys <laughs> So well said, I think it's, it's capturing the sentiment of so many people who are watching this and there is the, the terms I can think of as kind of an ick factor of having people at each other in this way, knowing the nuance and knowing the fact that everyone has served and what's the number, like less than 1% of people have protected this nation over time. I do wonder, given your strong feelings and, um, and the way in which he has been attacked in this way and he is addressing it in various ways it won't be the end of the story you have endorsed traditionally third party candidates although you did endorse him for his run for governor do you intend to endorse the harris waltz ticket now 
Well, I'll tell you this. I met with Bobby Kennedy last winter. We met for three hours. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I came in. I came in second. He chose his woman Shanahan as running mate, uh, which I think is a, is a disgrace. Robert F. Kennedy should have chosen Jesse Ventura. They would have won the election, bro. I know all my friends, and of course we're Irish. We're not American, but I'm saying a lot of my friends would have voted for RFK and. Uh, and of course Jesse Ventura over Donald Trump. That would have been incredible, guys. That would have been an incredible competition, you know? Especially if they like linked up somehow. That would have been kind of cool. If those three people linked up, that would have been incredible. But you know, now of course it's tough. Uh Bobby's still a friend of mine, but I'll tell you where I stand right now. I'm gonna be selfish. A few years ago, I got the opportunity to see the United States elect its first black president. I didn't think that could ever happen. And they even re-elected him. Well, now I'm going to be selfish again. Mm. I've only got a few elections to go. I'm 73 years old now, so the window's closing. I want to be alive to see the first woman president of the United States of America and the first woman commander in chief, and we've got her right now. Huh. That, that's a good point. Yeah, the whole woman thing is fine. I do agree with that, actually, guys. And it's actually kind of more intriguing to me than Kamala Harris herself. You know, I do find it, it's interesting that, that, that she's a woman, okay, rather than a man. I do like that point. That's kind of cool, in my personal opinion. Not that it matters, guys. You know, man, woman, it doesn't really matter. But kind of interesting. It's kind of different. But at the same time, guys, like I said, I'm definitely yeah more leaning towards the other side because definitely that's who's going to win, I think. You know, unfortunately for anyone thinking otherwise, that's pretty much how it's going now, so. Governor, thank you so much for sharing your views on this issue. I think a lot of people have been very interested to hear what you have said. So you are officially endorsing the Harris Van Walsh ticket, excuse me. Yes, I want to see a woman president. It's time for a woman president. We men have screwed it up enough. <laughs> and you know what? Maybe we'll finally get some legitimate thing on the abortion issue. You know how to solve abortion? Hold men responsible. They're the ones ultimately responsible for all abortions. Mm. If you hold men responsible, then you'll see a big change in the abortion rules. Damn! Bro, Jesse Ventura is wild. So it's kind of unfortunate though because he is an independent. The reason I love Jesse Ventura the most is because he's independent. He wrote a book, Demo Crips and Republicans. So it's very interesting to see now that he's siding with Kamala. Uh, when Donald Trump got elected, bear in mind, uh, Jesse Ventura also said that he loved to see it. So Don, uh, Jesse Ventura does kind of not flip flop, but he does like to see the underdog win, let's just say. What does that mean to hold them responsible? They're responsible for every abortion that could take place. They are the aggressor. S sex you mean, tells you that. You mean in terms of the, the there can't of rape? Be a, there can't be a baby without a man's involvement. That's what I'm telling you. So until you hold the men responsible for impregnating women, you're not going to get any type of legitimate type of law passed. You got to I agree guys like it's the it's the man's responsibility to put up to put on protection let's just say hold men responsible for the pregnancies of women because they are the ones responsible not the woman as as a tall caucasian man myself I've never been asked ever to put on protection by any woman especially if they're like brazilian or something that's why it's, it is the man's responsibility guys for the sure. man It'll be interesting to see how people evaluate that. On the one hand, thinking about autonomy and agency over one's body, and also the notion of assigning responsibility on the other. Well, I'll be curious to see how that, how that factors hey, out. Laura, you know what else I stand for? What, Governor? I don't stand for a minimum wage. I stand for a maximum wage. Mm. If you can't live on a million dollars a month, something's wrong with you. I actually was talking about three minutes ago with my brother about this. I 100% agree with that, guys. Like, this whole having billions and billions in your possessions, not able to spend the money for your whole lifetime, that shouldn't be a thing, guys. You know, you should maybe try and spend it on getting better jobs to people and spending it rather than just hoarding money, guys. I hate this hoarding of money. <laughs> well, I'd like to sign you know, up for the no, million dollar a month No, think about it a plan. moment. 12, if you make $12 million a year, what would you want for? 
<laughs> what would you possibly need? The point I'm making is there shouldn't be any billionaires, and I'll tell you mm. why. Because what? nobody works hard enough to get a billion dollars. And my hardest job I ever did was going through Navy SEAL training, and I was making $4 a day. Mm. And you're going to tell me a billionaire worked harder than I did? Bull crap. That's legendary. I love, dude, I love Jesse Ventura, man. I love this guy, man. It's true, guys. Like, as a billionaire, yeah, you made some great ideas. But Jeff Bezos doesn't work as hard. I mean, he probably works 12 hours a day. But, dude, there's some guy in flipping the Congo, you know, shoveling sand in a sand mine, you know, 20 hours a day. I'm sure he works just as hard physically and mentally being stressed out as much as Jeff Bezos. Because let's be real. Is there anything more to say? Governor Jesse Ventura, nope. thank you so much for joining <laughs> me this evening. I've been eager to hear your opinion. And I'm glad I heard it tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. I love it, guys. One absolute legend, guys. Jesse Ventura calls out JD Vance. I love that. Let me know your thoughts. I love you guys all. Stay free. Tell me down below what you all think, guys. Do you guys side with Jesse Ventura? I love Jesse Ventura, man. What an absolute legend. Patriot. I'll see you guys then, man. Peace.